Hello and welcome. welcome everybody to a new episode of the self-improvement segment where commercial real estate meets self-improvement. I'm here with Logan, it's Aurelien, the Mindful Investor. And today we will be discussing a book. We've decided we would discuss a book uh, once a month. And today we're discussing the 1% rule. Absolutely, absolutely, looking forward to it. Yeah, and um, so I think at the core is this idea of doing small daily actions tied to the larger vision. And uh, there is a, um, a number in the book that I find is pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, if you do 1% a day, the results are exponential. It's 3,700% a year. So that's, that's quite amazing. And um, I'm a strong believer in uh, the importance of uh, taking daily actions, micro, even if it's my mini actions, uh, they, they will get you to the, to the, to the, to the ultimate goal and um, yeah, and daily achievable actions. And I remember as a teacher, when I was uh, working with uh, students, a lot of the time, you know, when I was working with students that had the, um, uh, uh, that some um, cognitive um, cognitive issues and mm -hmm. one of the key aspects of uh, helping them was to break down tasks into smaller smaller more doable uh, tasks and uh, mm -hmm. that's at the core of this book too absolutely absolutely yeah it's a, it really is a great book uh, i'm glad we chose it for this month's uh, you know book review because there's uh, there's a lot of great content in there about you know, you know, thinking, not necessarily thinking smaller, but breaking things down into smaller tasks in order to achieve your larger vision, um, you know, reverse engineering, if you will, starting with an end goal and then trying to break it down into what are all the sections that need to get done. You know, you think about something like starting a business, uh, you need, you know, you, if you think about a business and what you want to do, you want to have this big landscaping company, for example, uh, you know, and you need to break that down into the financial aspect, the marketing aspect, and the operations aspect, right? And then you can go from there and continue to break down and break down and break down to where you can get to the point where what do you need to do with each of those subsets on a daily basis? And I love that that focus on on daily actions. Um, and so so reverse engineering this large grand scale down into daily tasks is is a, a prominent theme in the book and it's one that is absolutely critical if you're going to get anything done uh of substance that's that's a, especially when it comes to uh if you're in a sales role or if you're in a prospecting role of sorts if we're all investors and we're all looking for new products or, or new new properties to buy um you know breaking down that there are some parts of your day that are project-based and there are some parts that are repetitive tasks like finding new properties is a repetitive task evaluating properties is a repetitive task those things and setting time on a regular basis to do to do those things and breaking them down into, into you know, a very small scale. We've talked before about about cold calling and prospecting and and you know even breaking that down to to I'm going to call this many people per day uh, and make this many dials is is huge when it comes to when sco uh, zooming out to the grand scheme of how many properties did I buy this year. You know, it's zoomed way down into that little little uh, minute task, which is which is an awesome focus of the book. Um, but it, so, so walk me through your, your favorite parts of the book. Um, you know, what, what are some things that you found aside from diving down into, into the minute details? Well, there is a quote that uh, stuck with me. I, I took so many notes when I was reading the book. I went through my notes this morning again, and uh, I like this quote in particular. We don't rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's the insistence on the, on the consistency of, of the efforts to produce, because that's basically your level is what you do every day. And uh, and also duration is less important than intensity and consistency. Mm -hmm. He takes the example. So Tommy Baker takes the example of going to the gym, going to the gym once for five hours and never again is not going to help uh, mm -hmm. but get you to in a better shape. But if you go regularly, starting small will help. I know for myself, uh, I was I was running and, uh, and I stopped because I was um, experiencing some pain. Mm. And, and I use that for as an excuse for a while, but I'm, I'm back at it and I'm doing it slowly and uh, getting back into the groove by uh, uh, doing uh, two runs a week, two short runs, but uh, yep. I, I'll gradually increase. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
No, that's a wonderful point and way to put that. You know, if you start out, especially any task that's overwhelming, whether it's the gym and that's difficult, uh, cold calling is one that is always difficult for people. We'd always rather send the postcard than cold call. And I, I keep harping on that, but it is, it's such a psychological uh, mountain to climb as well. And so, you know, I, that's how I got started in that is, is a similar concept is I'm going to call two people today and that's it. That's all I have to worry about, just two. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat myself up that I didn't get a hundred calls done today. I'm just going to call two. And then the next day, maybe I'm going to call three. And then the next day, maybe I'll call four or, or maybe after that day of two and three, I celebrate, Hey, I got five done this week and I'm done. And, and that's, that's the little incremental growths that, that can, you know, lead to, to large success. And now I call, you know, hundred people a week, 150 people a week. Uh, you know, it's, and it's, it's much easier now, you know, to your point, when you get up to, to running right now, you know, when you're just ramping up, a a three mile run might seem like a, like a daunting task, but once you've been running for a while and you've been doing that and you've built those muscles, three mile you know you might say, oh man, I only got three miles in. <laughs> you know, I know I know runners. My my wife was one for a while. She she had a similar issue with her foot, um, but she uh, you know you know it wasn't anything for her to run four miles in a day. And so if she ran two miles. A lot of people would think, man, he ran two miles today, but for her that would have been a bad day. I only got two miles in. So. It's uh, if you start to build that muscle and, and no matter what you're doing, you start to build that, that, that success through repetitive action. Um, yeah. Yep. And another great quote from the book is a uh, mental real estate. And he talks about real estate. So mm -hmm. mental real estate is priceless. And, um, mm. and he talks also about the importance of saying no and the importance of focus. And that's, yep. you, know, it's, you, you find that often, but it's, it's a good reminder of the importance of, of saying no, because yep. if you, if you pick something, then, then by, uh, by definition, you're, you're saying no to something else. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really important to not say yes to everything and, and, and be able to say no, because, mm -hmm. you know, and not fall for the, um, the shiny object syndrome where, where you chase uh, one <laughs> business and after another, it's very important to, uh, to stay focused and, um, and, and, and start when you start a project, finish it yep. and, uh, and the insistent on the um, execution. Yeah. I'm laughing because I, I definitely have suffered from shiny object syndrome in the past. And I've, I've spent a lot of time in the last year trying to narrow that down. It's, it's funny. There's a, there's a quote. Now you mentioned that, that, I, that I pulled from the book. It says, if you don't fill your task with high priority items, other, others will fill it with lower priority items. So, mm. you know, people will call you into a meeting that you don't need to be in. They'll, they'll email you. And, and if your email's up all the time and you're constantly just looking over and finishing emails, you don't take the time to, to say, okay, I'm going to do email from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock and that's when I'm going to do email but the rest of the time is shut off you know people will pull you into that I know for me personally it's it's text message chains I, I have a, a few text message chains with several groups that I that I'm, a, I'm, I'm friends with and as fun as they are and as as exciting as they are and it's great to catch up with everybody they can be distracting so when I know I've got a specific task I need to do I have to set that aside because again if it, it's it's fun stuff it's not work stuff and when it's time to work it's time to work when it's time to play it's time to play so it's uh, that that quote I liked a lot. Don't fill your day with, or if, if you don't fill your day with high priority items, others will fill it with lower priority items. Yeah, and uh, uh, this reminds me of the in the book. He also talks about how he checks emails uh, after 10 a.m. and, and mm -hmm. not before, so that he has mm -hmm. time in the morning uh, dedicated to some to his his agenda things mm -hmm. that are on his agenda not someone else's mm -hmm. and um, and social media can be extremely distracting and uh, you're you're basically uh, someone else uh, uh, living after someone else's agenda when you when you when you're immersed into a, into social media and um, yeah and I'm I'm better at this and it's been um, it's been some it's something I've been working on and I, I'm happy to report that um, I don't check my phone as often and uh, now I have sessions of uh, I use an app called focus mate and i do a uh, 15 minute sessions and i did three this morning wasn't interrupted and was able to produce a lot of work and i'm, I'm really glad uh, i'm really glad uh, I, I i have this new relationship with email where i don't let myself be interrupted anymore that's awesome that's awesome yeah one one of the uh techniques in the book and it, it, that he had spoke of was the pomodoro technique mm -hmm. and it was a, a 25 minute on five minute off section and he said, initially, you know, just do one a day, whatever that task is that's most important to you, do one Pomodoro around that task and, and just be, be happy with that. And they said, ultimately, he'd build up to, you know, four cycles a day, 
and then take 20 minutes off and then do more cycles. And he builds his day that way where it's 25 minutes on a five minute break. And, and I love that, that structure to it. I think it's, it's uh, you know, just, Hey, I'm going to work a little bit and then be done as opposed to building that actual structure. I always find it easier, you know, we going back to the gym example, it's much easier instead of saying, yeah, I'm going to go to the gym today or I'm going to go to the gym after work. It's, I go to the gym at 5.30. Like that's when I go to the gym, you know, and when I'm there, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. And having that structure and build out in advance is so much easier to go and get motivated and stay motivated and stay on top of it than just, yeah, I'm going to go to the gym sometime today, you know, because it's it's way too easy to just, just get distracted by what life throws at you. Yeah, and he also says um, uh, the most important day, the most difficult day is day two. Uh, mm, so day one yeah. you know you're filled with good intention <laughs> and, uh, you have your project motivated and uh, yeah it's it's crucial to stick with it and um, mm -hmm. and he says to be very careful with the how because sometimes this is where dreams go to die in the how <laughs> so at the beginning it's very important to uh, articulate yeah. your vision and mm -hmm. um, and the how will come uh, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely I think we see that all the time with with deals that happen in the, in the commercial real estate world or real estate in general, wherever you are in the real estate spectrum. But, um, you know, you, you see a deal and it's easy to find reasons not to do the deal. Um, but when you see one that you want and you really want to go after your creativity starts kicking in and you're like, well, I could do this. I could finance it this way. I could go about it that way. And, and, and you'll find the how when, when, when the right thing comes along, you'll find the how to your point. That's, that don't get bogged down in that for now, focus on the vision. And if the vision is, I need to find this type of property that's got these, that meets these metrics and I'm just focusing on finding those and that's that's kind of what I'm doing and that's what I'm going after. Uh, the how I'm gonna get that deal done will come once you get there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so maybe your last uh, nugget from the book was uh, the idea of momentary disconnects. So mm -hmm. you talked about Pomodoro technique and there is a five minute break and it's important to, to disconnect. And um, uh, one example he gives in the book is uh, after, after a day of work, you know, take a few, a few moments to, to reconnect and, and refocus, you know, before you, you go back home, before you open the door. Uh, you know, re refocus. It's being the mindset of I'm now with my family and try to mm -hmm. uh, be intentional and, and and focused on them. It's um, yep. it's very precious time. So yeah. I have a young daughter. So uh, and we now have a puppy. So yeah. I, I want to focus on my wife and everybody at home and not be uh, uh, thinking about work. And uh, so yeah, take a little breather and then mm -hmm. focus on the next thing and be um and i remember so there is a gentleman i really admire his name is david Azrieli, and uh, mm. he he was a proponent of being in the in the in the present moment and uh, you know there was there was no question of mindfulness he wasn't at all into this you know he he passed uh, 10 years ago at age 90 and um, but when he walked when he went on a walk with his daughter he could sense it you know in her in the way she was holding his hand that she wasn't focused and uh, and he would tell her you know be be in the present be with me we're we're having a walk right now so be be with me in the present moment so the importance of taking moments to uh, to to refocus mm -hmm. yeah no that's a that's a great point for sure it's uh it, it's way too easy especially in today's world to to be distracted and so intentionally finding ways to tune out those distractions is vital as well so there's, uh, I know there are different apps and different techniques and different things you can do, but, but find ones that work for you and just, you know, tune that stuff out when it's time to, to your point, when it's time to be with family, be with family, when it's time to go play, go play, when it's time to work, go to work. So it's, exactly. yeah. Okay, yeah. well, we hope you find this, uh, you found this, uh, our reflections on the uh, one person rule by Tommy Baker mm -hmm. interesting, and we recommend you read the book. It was, uh, it's, a, it's a great one. And uh, as, as we said earlier, we'll be covering a book every month. And uh, so you can look forward to a next month episode about uh, another book. And uh, yeah, thank you, Logan. Thank you. See yep. you in a week. All right, everybody, we'll see you.